Look at her, John. Just look at her. I am. She's even more magnificent than I remember. Then again, we didn't see much of our friends last night. <gasps> Good morrow, Mather. Good morrow. Is it the habit in Philadelphia for strangers to shout at ladies from the street? Oh, well, no, but we're not. And from men of your age, it is not only unseemly, it's unsightly. Uh, pardon me, madam, but we met last evening. I spoke to no one last evening. <laughs> Indeed, you did not, but nevertheless, we presented ourselves. This is Mr. John Adams, and I am Dr. Franklin. Please, I know your names very well, but you say you presented yourself? Oh, it's of no matter. Your thoughts were well taken elsewhere. My husband is not yet up. May we start over? Please, madam, join us. Yes, of course. <laughs> no wonder the man couldn't write. Who could think of him to defend its very to her? I beg you to forgive me. It is indeed an honor meeting the two greatest men in America. Oh, the greatest within shot and ways. <laughs> I am not an idle flatterer, Dr. Franklin. My husband admires you both greatly. <laughs> then we are doubly flattered. For we admire very much that which your husband, husband, husband admires you. Did you sleep well, madam? John! Mama! I mean, did you lie comfortably? Oh, my God. Oh, Sam, you, you know what I mean. Yes, John, we do. Tell us about yourself, madam. We've precious little information. What's your first name? Martha. Ah, uh, Martha. You think he'd at least have told us that much. I'm afraid your husband doesn't say very much. He's the most silent man in Congress. I've never heard him utter three sentences together. <laughs> Not everyone's a talker, John. Oh, it's true, you know. Tom is not a talker. <laughs> oh, he never speaks his passions. He never speaks his views. For men's other men speak of volumes. The man I love is mute. Thank you. 